Hey, welcome back everyone. As some of you probably know, I made a video a while back reviewing the uh, Music Man Sterling, which is a knockoff of a Music Man Access. Since then, I've picked up a Music Man Access. So I thought it'd be appropriate to review the two guitars now that I actually had an opportunity to play both of them. I had a lot of questions being posted about the Sterling at the time and I just want to give you the rundown on what the differences are between these two guitars. Most of you probably already know that the Sterling is based on the Music Man Access. It's basically a copy, a lower end copy that's made overseas. The price on the Sterling is a fraction of the cost of the Access. This Access retails in some stores for well over $2,000 while the sterling is uh, I think in the five or six hundred dollar range so there's a big difference in price now some of you might be saying the guitars are very similar so what's the difference why do I want to go out and spend two thousand dollars on a guitar when I can get something that looks almost identical for a fraction of the cost unless you play this guitar like me you won't know the difference okay and you'll be very happy with what you have but once you play this guitar you're gonna want to come home with this guitar it's that good and I'm going to tell you why, okay? In my opinion, the, guitar, the guitars look very similar, but that's where the similarities end. This guitar has the less is more approach by using only one knob, and that's a volume knob, a switch for the pickups, high quality switch made of metal, very good quality Floyd Rose, it's licensed Floyd Rose, the Floyd Rose on this guitar, I can tell you honestly, is way better than what's on the Sterling. Uh, it's made better all around, better materials, better fit and finish, uh, more solid, thicker. Uh, even the bar on this is better. It's uh, more solid, it's uh, sturdy, it doesn't fall off, it's got a, a little Allen key that locks it in place, very smooth action. The Floyd on this guitar, like the Sterling, is non-floating, meaning that the, the bridge sits on the body. And I particularly like that feature because I'm not, I, I don't really go crazy with the, uh, with the Floyd that much anyway, so I'm not doing any kind of wild pulling up on it to begin with. But I feel that if it's sitting on the body, you have a little bit more tuning stability if you happen to break a string, you're not, all the other strings are not going to go out of tune, which is kind of embarrassing when you're playing in front of a, a crowd. And also, if you decide to put the detuna on here so that you can pop the E string into the D position, um, the other strings are not necessarily going to change pitch as they can when the bridge is floating. Now, two of the main um, aspects of this guitar that really make it shine are the pickups and the neck. So let me talk about the pickups for a little bit here. They look like the pickups that are on the Sterling, but they're not. The difference is that these pickups, although they are high output pickups, they can clean up quite nicely just by rolling back on the volume knob. So you get the, the bite of the high output pickups, but you can bring it down and you can get them to clean up quite nicely for a little bit more of a bluesy tone, uh, you know, just a little bit of a crunch, not necessarily full overdrive. It has a lot of variations in tonal properties which I find really make the pickups shine. Um, they've become really, really, like to me, they're, they're, they're awesome pickups. I love playing this guitar. And that's one of the reasons why this guitar stands out to me is that when I take it and hold it and start playing it, I don't want to stop. And you know, I would gladly trade a couple of my higher-end guitars for another one like this anytime, in a heartbeat. Now, the neck on this guitar is the, the key, I find. The neck is very uh, plain looking, but it's finished perfectly. The dimensions on this guitar neck is really uh, ideal. It's not wide at all. It's actually thinner and feels less bulky than some of my Stratocaster necks. Um, and I was actually very surprised by that. I thought it would be a little bit wider than it is. But it turns out not to be. And I actually like that. The neck, because it's not finished in the back, 
there's no poly on here. So what they did is they just oil it down and uh, apply some, some oil and maybe a little bit of wax on there as opposed to having a poly finish. And what that does is since there's no plastic coating, your hand doesn't stick to it. So when you're playing and you know you might get sweaty or whatever, you don't have that resistance on the neck with your hand and it really stays super fast. I've put on a couple, I've, I've put on some elixir strings on here and I tell you it, it, it just feels like it's, it's playing itself. It really is. The wood on the uh, neck as I mentioned is a little, is uh, quite special because it's bird's eye maple so it's highly figured. You got a really nice finish there. I don't know if you can see it but you can see maybe some of the birds, the bird eye pattern in there. Uh, really nice and they did a fantastic job on this neck. The frets are not jumbo, they're medium frets and I thought that was a little bit odd at first because I, w I came to expect you know uh, a guitar with higher output pickups and a Floyd Rose and locking system to have um, some sort of you know maybe a little bit of a wider uh, pickup, um, a wider fret on there but you know, I play strats and stuff like that and I don't mind the medium frets and I find the advantage to having a medium fret is that you can put the action a little lower and my action on this guitar is probably as low as you can get and I had absolutely no buzzing on this neck at all, no issues, no nothing warped, nothing, you know, it, it, it was adjusted perfectly. Um, other than that, the tuners on the guitar are standard, there's four on one side, two on the other side and these tuners, the actual, actual mechanism of the tuners, they're made in Germany and they have uh, what you can see here, they have the tops that are made out of plastic and you know I mentioned that in my other video, I don't feel that that's a disadvantage at all. Some people claim you know that, they're, that they look cheap, uh, to me they don't look cheap actually I prefer the plastic to the metal because they don't tarnish and the paint if you have a gold paint or a black base paint it always comes off when you sweat it becomes tarnish and it, and it peels away or flakes away it looks terrible these things will stay the same no matter what you can sweat on them they'll stay the same uh, Gibson has been using them for years without any problems I have no issues with these kinds of tuners um, the the, the guitar <clears throat> is made in California. It's not made overseas, um, so you know you could expect to pay more for a guitar like this. And if you ask me honestly, you know what I think. Would I hesitate to buy another one? The answer is no. The only thing I would do is maybe look around and see if I can get one used for a better price. But absolutely worthwhile. This guitar is totally awesome. So do yourself a favor, go to your local music store, check one out, play it, just be aware that you might come home with one. Um, I will eventually make another video comparing my OLP guitar to this one and the Sterling and I know you guys all want to hear what it sounds like so I will do a follow-up video and actually play the thing so that you can actually get a good idea of what it sounds like. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any other questions, don't hesitate. Send me some messages. I'll be happy to answer your questions. And that's it for now. Thank you for listening.